Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding average selling price and walk you through how we can develop queries in such questions. This question has been asked at Amazon interviews a couple of times in the past six months. Okay, so let's jump right in and see what the question says. So we are given a table called prices with four different columns, product ID, start date, end date, and price. The product ID, the combination of product ID, start date, and end date is the primary key for this table. Okay. Each row of this table indicates the price of the product ID in the period from start date to end date. Okay. So basically product one between say 5th of January, 2021 to 5th of February, 2022, uh, it was for ten dollars, fifteen dollars, uh, things like that. Each um, for each product ID, there will be no two overlapping periods. Okay, that means there will be no two inter intersecting periods for the same product ID. Okay, so what this means is, uh, so if there is a pre period of time that is given, so in that period of time the product can have only one price so it won't be that in a given particular week one row of this table would be stating that it was for five dollars and the other row will be saying that it was for ten dollars so that is not going to happen for one uh, duration that is one interval between start date and end date the price is going to be one right we are also given a second table called units sold with three columns, the product ID, purchase date and units. Again, no primary key for this table. So it may contain duplicates. Okay. Each row of this table indicates the date, units and product ID of each product sold. So basically which product are sold on what date and how many of those products were sold. So we are asked to write a SQL query to find the average selling price for each product. And this is the alias of the table or the name of the final column that we need to return. And it should be rounded to two decimal places. The order of the results does not matter. Okay, let's go through these examples. So here it is a prices table as well as the unit sold table. And we are given four records in each. So for product ID one, we are given that is between start date and end date so 17th of february 2019 to 28th of february 2019 so around two weeks the price was five and let's let's assume the units are dollars so five dollars for the same product uh between first of march 2019 and 20 22nd of march 2019 the price was 20 dollars similarly for product two right for units sold uh product id one was 100 units of these product uh, was sold on 25th of February 2019, right? So now we need to find out the average selling price. So let's take the example of uh, product ID 1, right? So simple maths, right? So, okay, so this product was sold on 25th of February 2019. 25th of February 2019, uh, what was the price of product 1? And uh, this date falls between with which range? this one right so between 17th of february and 28th of february so the price was five dollars so you multiply 100 into five right so 500 dollars similarly for this one first of march 2019 first of march 2019 the price was 20 dollars 15 were so so 15 into 20 300 dollars right so and how do you calculate the average price of product id you sum so 100 into 5 plus 15 into 20, which is 500 plus 300, $800. And then you divide the, in total how many units were sold. So 100 plus 15. So you divide 800 by 15. You get around six point or seven dollars right? So that is what we are being returned. And similarly, if you go with product i2, you can do the same, right? So this is a very easy question. And this is the general logic that we need to do. So the first thing that we need to do is merge the information of these two tables into one right because it is important to know even though we are given the prices of the products in a certain durations we need to know on what particular date and uh, how many of a particular product was so, uh, sold so that we can also calculate 
which date range the particular date falls in and what was the price in that duration right so to do this we can do joins right we can do left join we can do inner join why should we go here and and for with both uh, left join as well as inner join we can get the answer but why we should prefer here or any hint that you got up till now uh, that we should prefer inner join over left join so yeah here uh, we have, we are to write a sql query to find average selling price for each product right so we don't care if the product is not here right so that is why we can perform an inner join so only uh, keep those records where the product id is both in prices as well as the units sold right so because if let's say there was a uh, product number three uh, with certain date ranges and the price was 50 dollars but it was not sold right so if the product was not sold you don't have average selling price for that product right so we, we don't need to look into that so we can we don't need to perform a left join that every product in the prices table should be there or things like that so we can go ahead and do the inner join okay so from prices table let's alias it as p because we are going to perform joins and then some filtering so it would be easy and faster to write code inner join unit sold table again you alias it as u on and what column should we join this on product ids right so p dot product id is equal to u dot product id right so what will happen in this case right so let's forget and let's say we are returning everything right so let's forget uh of any you know group buys or filtering or whatever like what will this code return assume like here it is select star right so let's take example of uh, product id1 right so same would be the case for uh, product id2 and all the product ids mentioned in the table so let me just uh, write these things to you know explain you guys how and what are the rows that will be there so 2019 Feb 28 and the price was 5 and again 1 2019 um, 3 1 2019 3 22nd the price was 20 right okay so what will happen and this is this is the prices table right and so if I perform an inner join, so what will happen on product? So this is the product ID column, right? So it will take the first value one, go to the unit sold table and see. Okay, so for one, we have a match. So we have to keep this and uh, it will keep, it will include the purchase date and the units, right? So for one, it is going to have again one, one, why this one is where from where this one is coming. So from the unit sold table. So one, 2019 02 right? Now, again, the cursor is still on one and it goes and tries to find out if there is any anything else where the product ID was one, right? So yeah, it will find again. So joins work in this way, right? So if there are multiple matches, it will keep all those information, right? So again, since the cursor was only on this, right? So again, what will happen is this row will get duplicated, but the values in the product ID purchase date and units column would be different because now what will happen? Now the cursor was here and it found the second column, right? So here, same thing, one, 2019, 03, 01. Right, and the number of units sold were 15. Similarly, for now, it will see, okay, so when the cursor was at one, it found two rows where the product IDs matches, so included both the table, uh, both the rows. Now, it will see, okay, 
that's it there is nothing else to match it will go to seconds row 2 okay product id 1 again it will find two things and uh, it will include both of these right so basically what will happen the same thing will come uh, here just a second yep so here and again same values in the first four columns but these values in the last three columns so you understand right how joins work now from here what we can see so this is the duration date and this is the purchase date right um so let's say here uh between uh, 17th of jan 17th of february and 28th of february 2019 there is a date 25th of february where 100 units of 100 units were bought on a price of five dollars right so this makes sense but if you see the second row right so between 17th of february and 28th of february 2019 there was something that was bought on 1st of march 2019 on 15 on uh, 15 units were bought on five dollars does not make sense right because the duration is something else and we are given a purchase date of something else so obviously rows like this are giving us no information they are useless so we should exclude these kind of rows right similarly for this right between 1st of march 2019 and 22nd of march 2019 uh purchase date is given 25th of february which is obviously not in this duration so exclude these these kind of rows so what we can do is filter out these kind of rows right so where p dot purchase date so Oh, sorry, not P dot purchase date, where U dot purchase date, because purchase date is a column in unit sold table and we alias it at U, is between, between what? P dot start date and P dot end date. So P dot start date and P dot end date, right? So what will this do? it will remove things like these right so since here this is not between these day uh, these dates so you remove this this is not between these dates remove this and remember between takes and includes the dates that you are mentioning right so that is why here even though this is not between this but between means it includes the dates that we are you know giving it so since this is equal to this so it will keep these kind of rows okay so now what do we need to do let for product one if we group by the product right so the group by p dot product id remember these first four columns are from prices table right so give group by product id so it will what it will happen one right so when you are grouping by so one let's return p dot product id why we are returning because for every product we need to calculate the average price and how do you calculate the average price you number of units bought multiplied by the price which was in that particular duration similarly for all these rows and you sum it right so uh, this this is uh, from the prices table right so p dot price multiplied by this is from units sold table so u dot units right so it will calculate the all these multiplications for each of the products then what do you need to do is you sum them right so sum these so now what is happening 100 into 5 plus 15 into 20 now we need to divide these things by the all the number of units because then in, then only we can get the average price so you divide this by sum of all the units so sum of u dot units so basically uh, all this column 
for each of the product it will sum the values right now uh, what we need to do is we need to round it to two decimal places okay so we will wrap around the round function round this in comma two decimal places and that's it and at last what we need to do we need to alias this as average price so as average price so you see now for each of the product id it will give you the average price and since the order does not matter so we don't need to include order by in this let me delete all this and let's go ahead and run this query and see if this works so yeah it is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it and see if it passes all the test cases so yeah it passes all the test cases it's accepted and this is how we solve these questions see this question was very easy all you needed to do is apply your logic and develop the query step by step and the way i was describing it if you are a beginner and if you are trying to learn how sql works try to follow this method because step by step you will learn each at each step what is happening and from that particular result that you have at a particular step what is that you need to keep and what is you need to exclude so that you only have every at after every step have relevant amount of data to work with this not only makes your query runs faster but you also understand the logic in your head that yeah i did firstly i started with joining these and then i only included those rows which matters to me and then when i have the clean data i for each of the product i group by i return that product id i calculate the average price things like that so yeah let me know if you guys found this video useful and i will see you guys in the next video